friends, it's Miss Julie here from the Deerfield Public Library again. And before we do our opening rhyme, I want to talk to you about what our theme for today's story time is. And who can see what animals I've got here? Can you shout it out really loud at home all so I can hear you all the way in my house? You're right, bear! So this one looks a little bit more like a realistic bear, I think. And I think this one looks a little bit more about, like a teddy bear. So we're actually reading some stories about both kinds of bears today. So we'll let them take a nap. And our opening rhyme is called Open, Shut Them. And we're getting our hands ready, so you can follow along with me. Ready? Open, shut them, open, shut them. Give a little clap, clap, clap. Open, shut them, open, shut them. Lay them in your lap, lap, lap. Creep them, crawl them, creep them, crawl them. Right up to your chin, chin, chin. Open up your little mouth, but do not let them in, in, in. Okay, our first story today it's called Where's My Teddy by Jez Albro, and it is published by Candlewick Press. Eddie's off to find his teddy. Eddie's teddy's name is Freddy. He lost him in the woods somewhere. It's dark and horrible in there. Help, said Eddie. I'm scared already. I want my bed. I want my teddy. He tiptoed on and on until something made him stop quite still. Look out, he thought, there's something there. What's that? What is it? A giant teddy bear. Is it Freddy, said Eddie? What a surprise. How did you get to be this size? You're too big to huddle and cuddle, he said, and I'll never fit both of us into my bed. <clears throat> Then out of the darkness, clearer and clearer, the sound of sobbing came nearer and nearer. Soon the whole woods could hear the voice bawl. How did you get so, to be so tiny and small? You're too small to huddle and cuddle, it said, and you'll only get lost in my giant-sized bed. It was a gigantic bear and a tiny teddy stomping toward the giant teddy and Eddie. My Ted, gasped the bear. A bear, screamed Eddie. A boy, yelled the bear. My Teddy, cried Eddie. Then they ran and they ran through the dark woods back to their homes as fast as they could. All the way back to their snuggly beds where they huddled and cuddled their own little Teds. The end. Phew, that was a big mix up. Thank goodness they got that straightened out. Okay, our next story is called Moon Game by Frank Ash. And it's published, published excuse me, by Aladdin Paperbacks. One day, Little Bird showed Bear a new game, hide and seek. First, he told Bear to hide and counted to ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Then he went looking for Bear. I found you, chirped Little Bear when, it, when he found Bear hiding behind some bushes. Now it's your turn to find me. All day long until the sun went down, Bear and Little Bird played their new game. That night when Bear was all alone, he looked up into the sky and said to the moon, let's play hide and seek. First I'll hide and you find me. Then Bear ran as fast as he could until he came to an old hollow tree. Climbing inside, he ducked down so the moon couldn't see him. Bear waited for a while, then poked his head up. When he did, the moon was right there looking down at him. Okay, said Bear, you found me. Now it's your turn to hide. Closing his eyes, Bear began to count, just as Little Bird had shown him. At that moment, a gentle breeze slowly hid the moon behind a big cloud. <clears throat> when Bear finished counting, he set out to find the moon. First, he thought he found the moon hiding behind some rocks. But what was it instead? You're right, a flower. Then he thought he found the moon hiding in someone's house. But it was really some cheese. When Bear thought he found the moon hiding in a tree, he shook the tree and cried, I found you, moon. But Bear was mistaken. All he found was a big balloon. Then Little Bird came by to visit. Will you help me find the moon? asked Bear. Sure, I'll help, chirped Little Bird. Bear and Little Bird looked and looked, but they couldn't find the moon. <clears throat> so they went to the forest to ask for help. 
I think the moon is lost, explained Bear. Can you help me find him? Don't worry, we'll help you, replied the animals in the forest. Together they searched and searched, but they couldn't find the moon. At last, Bear sat down and sighed. The moon is lost and it's all my fault. Then Bear got an idea. He jumped up and cried, Okay, moon, I give up. You win. Just then the breeze began to blow again and the moon came out of its hiding place. Look, chirped little bird, the moon wasn't lost. He was just hiding behind that big cloud. Bear was so happy, he danced and danced. Then everyone played hide and seek. The end. Oh, you thank goodness they found the moon. Bear was so worried. Okay, now we're gonna do a flannel board story that's based on a very famous fairy tale you might know from, you might even have a version of it at your house, called Goldilocks and the Three Bears. Once upon a time, there was a cute little girl named Goldilocks. One day, she decided to venture out into the mysterious forest behind her house alone. Pretty soon, she came across a little brown house. <clears throat> this was the home of the Bear family. The Bear family had stepped out for a walk while their porridge cooled. Goldilocks walked up to the front door and knocked loudly on the door. No one answered the door. Goldilocks decided to open the door and walk in. When she did, she saw three bowls of porridge. Porridge is kind of like oatmeal. Goldilocks was hungry. She tried the first bowl of porridge. She shouted, this porridge is too hot. Then she tried the second bowl of porridge. This porridge is too cold, shrieked Goldilocks. She then picked up the third bowl of porridge. In a quiet voice, Goldilocks said, Ah, this porridge is just right. Eating the porridge made Goldilocks a little sleepy. She wandered into the living room where she found three chairs. <clears throat> Goldilocks, Goldilocks sat down in a large brown chair. Goldilocks yelled, this chair is too big. She moved to the pink chair. This chair is also too big, shouted Goldilocks. She hopped off and went to the small wooden chair. Goldilocks sat in the wooden chair and exclaimed, this chair is just right. After she settled into the chair, uh-oh, it broke into pieces. <clears throat> Goldilocks was still very tired. She headed upstairs to the bedroom while she, where she found three beds. <clears throat> Goldilocks sat on the first bed. It was too hard. She moved to the second bed. It was too soft. She lay down on the last bed and fell fast asleep. She was fast asleep. <clears throat> when Goldilocks was asleep, Papa Bear, or the, excuse me, the Bear family returned from their walk. There's Papa Bear. Mama Bear and Baby Bear. Someone's been eating my porridge, growled the Papa Bear. Someone's been eating my porridge, said the Mama Bear. Someone's been eating my porridge and they ate it all up, cried the Baby Bear. Someone's been sitting in my chair, growled the Papa Bear. Someone's been sitting in my chair, said the Mama Bear. Someone's been sitting in my chair and they've broken it all to pieces, cried the Baby Bear. The Bear family decided to look around their house. They went upstairs to the bedroom. Papa Bear growled, someone's been sleeping in my bed. Someone's been sleeping in my bed too, said the Mama Bear. Someone's been sleeping in my bed and she's still there, exclaimed Baby Bear. Just then Goldilocks woke up and saw the, th the three bears. She screamed, help, and she jumped out and ran out of the room. Goldilocks ran down the stairs, opened the door, and ran away into the forest, and she never returned to the home of the three bears ever again. Whew, she's lucky she made it out of there. I don't think they were too happy. Okay, our next story is a very famous book about a very famous teddy bear that you might have at your house, or maybe you've checked it out from the library before or seen it at, at your school. It's called Corduroy, and it's uh, written and illustrated by Don Freeman. <clears throat> And it's published by Puffin Books. <clears throat> Corduroy 
boy is a bear who once lived in the toy department of a big store. Day after day, he waited with all the other animals and dolls for somebody to come along and take him home. There's, the store was always filled with shoppers buying all sorts of things, but no one ever seemed to want a small bear in green overalls. Then one morning, a little girl stopped and looked straight into Corduroy's bright eyes. Oh, Mommy, she said, look, that, there's the very bear I've always wanted. Not today, dear, her mother sighed. I've spent too much already. Besides, he doesn't look new. He's lost the button to one of his shoulder straps. Corduroy watched them sadly as they walked away. I didn't know I lost a button, he said to himself. Tonight I'll go and see if I can find it. Later that evening, when all the shoppers had gone and all the doors were shut and locked, Corduroy climbed carefully down from his shelf and began searching everywhere on the floor for his lost button. Suddenly, he felt the floor moving under him. Quite by accident, he'd stepped out onto an escalator, and up he went. Could this be a mountain, he wondered? I think I've always wanted to climb a mountain. He stepped off the escalator as it reached the next floor, and there, before his eyes, was the most amazing sight. Tables and chairs and lamps and sofas and rows and rows of beds. This must be a palace, Corduroy gasped. I guess I've always wanted to live in a palace. It was actually the furniture department of the department store, but Corduroy doesn't know that. He wandered around admiring the furniture. This must be a bed, he said. I've always wanted to sleep in a bed. And up he crawled onto a large, thick mattress. All at once, he saw something small and round. Why, here's my button, he cried, and he tried to pick it up. But like all the other buttons on the mattress, it was tied down tight. He yanked and pulled with both his paws until, pop, off came the button and off the mattress, and, and off the mattress, corduroy toppled, bang, into a tall floor lamp. Over it fell with a crash. Corduroy didn't know it, but there was someone else awake in the store. The night watchman, which is like a security guard, was going his rounds on the floor above. When he heard the crash, he came dashing down the escalator. Now who in the world did that? He exclaimed. Somebody must be hiding around here. He flashed his light under and over sofas and beds until he came to the biggest bed of all. And there he saw two fuzzy brown ears sticking up from under the covers. Hello, he said. How did you get upstairs? The watchman tucked Corduroy under his arm and carried him down the escalator and set him on the shelf in the toy department with the other animals and dolls. Corduroy was just waking up when the first customers came to the store in the morning, and there, looking at him with a wide, warm smile, the same little girl he'd seen only the day before. <clears throat> I'm Lisa, she said, and you're going to be my very own bear. Last night I counted what I've saved in my piggy bank, and my mother said I could bring you home. Shall I put him in a box for you? The sales lady asked. Oh, no, thank you, Lisa answered, and she carried Corduroy home in her arms. She ran all the way up four flights of stairs into her family's apartment and straight to her own room. Corduroy blinked. There was a chair and a chest of drawers, and along a girl-sized bed stood a little bed just the right size for him. The room was small, nothing like that enormous palace in the department store. This must be home, he said. I know I've always wanted a home. Lisa sat down with Corduroy on her lap and began to sew a button on his overalls. I like you the way you are, she said, but you'll be more, more comfortable with your shoulder strap fastened. You must be a friend, said Corduroy. I've always wanted a friend. Me too, said Lisa, and gave him a big hug. The end. Oh, that's one of my favorites. And our last book before we'll say goodbye for today's story time is called Bear Snores On, and it's written by Karma Wilson and illustrated by Jane Chapman. And published by Margaret K. McElderry Books, which is a division of Simon & Schuster. In a cave in the woods in his deep, dark lair through the long, cold winter sleeps a great brown bear. And what we call that when an animal sleeps all the way through the winter? Hibernation. <clears throat> Cuddled in a heap with his eyes shut tight, he sleeps through the day, he sleeps through the night. The cold winds howl and the night sounds growl, but the bear snores on. An itty bitty mouse, pitter patter, tiptoe, creep crawls in the cave from the fluff cold snow. Mouse squeaks, too damp, too dank, too dark. So he lights wee twigs with a small hot spark. They made a little fire. The coals pip pop and the wind doesn't stop, but the bear snores on. 
Two glowing eyes, sneak peek in the den. Mouse cries, who's there? And a hare hops in. A hare's like a bunny rabbit. Ho, oh, mouse, says hare, long time no see. So they pop white corn and they brew black tea. Mouse sips, we slurps, hare burps, big burps. But the bear snores on. A badger scuttles by, sniff snuffs at the air. I smell yummy yums, perhaps we can share. I brought honey nuts, Badger says with a grin. Let's divvy them up, cozy down, and dig in. And they nibble and they munch with a chew, chomp, crunch. But the bear snores on. A gopher and a mole tunnel up through the hole. Then a wren and a raven flutter in through the door. Mole mutters, what a night, what a storm, twitters wren, and everybody clutters in the great bear's den. They tweet and they titter, they chat and they chitter, but the bear snores on. In a cave in the woods, a slumbering bear sleeps through the party in his very own lair. Hare stokes the fire, mouse seasons stew, then a small pepper fleck makes the bear... Uh-oh, what do you think? Ah-choo! He blows and he sneezes and the whole crowd freezes. And the bear <gasps> wakes up. Bear gnarls and he snarls, bear roars and he rumbles, bear jumps and, sees and he stomps, bear growls and he grumbles. You, you've snuck in my lair and you've all had fun, but me, I was sleeping and I have had none. And he whimpers and he moans and he wails and he groans and the bear blubbers on. Mouse squeaks, don't fret, don't fuss, look, see, we can pop more corn, we can brew more tea. Bear gulps, bear gobbles, he sighs with delight. <sighs> then he spins tall tails through the blustery night. When the sun peeks up on a crisp, clear day, bear can't sleep, but his friends snore on. <gasps> so now he's wide awake and they're all asleep from having such a big party. The end. Okay, well, thank you so much for joining me for story time today, everybody, everyone. Um, today we're going to do for our opening, excuse me, closing rhyme, we're gonna do we wave goodbye like this, so get your hands ready. It goes, we wave goodbye like this. We wave goodbye like this. We wave goodbye to all our friends. We wave goodbye like this. Thanks so much for joining me. I hope to see you again soon. Bye-bye.